you read the title. And again, like last time, timestamps and references in the description. Here we go. Pressing tab will move to the next property field in the inspector. This way you can quickly input values without having to touch your mouse at all. If your UI clicks don't seem to be registering, head to the debugger and click on the miscellaneous tab. Here you can see which control node was just clicked on. This will help you figure out if there's another element blocking your click. You can use the arrow keys to adjust the field's value. Hold control for 100, shift for 10 and alt for 0.1. Press shift F11 to toggle full screen. If you need two animations to be the exact opposite of each other, display the first animation backwards. You can use this little icon to change the color wheel to whichever format you prefer. You can assign variables to other variables on declaration even though autocomplete might lead you to believe that it is impossible. You can save default import presets by finding the option here under the import tab. You can now import all your animations at 17 FPS if you wanted to, because I don't know, maybe you're a sick freak. Use the owner property of a node to reference the root node of a packed scene. This is safer than using get parent because owner will always reference the scene root even if the hierarchy changes. Here for example, the owner of the right foot would be the player node and the owner of the player would be the level node. By default, the compiler will not enforce signal parameters while emitting them. Create a function right after creating the signal with the same signature and use this method to emit the signal instead. This way you can never emit it with the incorrect parameters. Whenever you cast a variable, you can wrap the entire statement in parentheses and then call the methods directly on it without having to store a reference to it first. In theory you could take this further, but you should probably stop there. You can use the visible on screen notifier nodes to be able to hook into signals that fire when a node either enters or exits the camera's view. You can use the visible on screen enabler to toggle on and off behaviors based on whether a certain node is visible on screen. For example, we have a print in the process method of this node. When the enabler leaves the screen, the printing stops. Use a ternary operator to assign a value to a variable based on a simple condition in a single line. You can toggle distraction free mode using Control shift f 11 This will expand the viewport and the script window and now you have more space to work with. Directly cast to a float by simply adding a decimal point to the integer. Use getters and setters to run logic when reading a variable or writing to it. The logic is always run when the variable is used. A neat use case for properties is to fire a signal whenever a variable changes. Just create a custom signal and emit it in the setter. You can change a node's type without having to recreate it by right clicking on it and then clicking on change node type. You can use Godot on your phone. Why you might ask? Because you can write documentation for your own scripts and or or their members by using two hashes. Use at the top of your script to document the script itself and use before a method or a variable to document that. This automatically adds a page to the in-engine documentation for your custom script. You can now look up your scripts to read up on how a class or method of yours works if you've forgotten. You can easily filter out null elements from a node array using the filter method and checking if the instance is valid. When you child a node to another node, the child inherits all parent transforms. But let's say you only want the position to be inherited, but not the rotation or the scale. You can do this really easily without having to make a custom script by using the remote transform nodes. Attach a remote transform to the parent node and set the child node in its remote path property. Now you can choose which transforms to inherit and only the selected transforms will be inherited. When creating a new node, you can select a node and mark it as favorite by clicking on the star icon on top. Your favorites will appear here. You probably knew that already, but here's the kicker. You can now simply click on the star icon right from the create root node window directly to find those nodes. If you want to delete nodes without the annoying confirmation window showing up every time, you can unbind the default delete node shortcut and bind the delete no confirm instead. Or even better, just make a habit of using the cut function using Ctrl X. You can also use it to get rid of full lines in the script editor. I rarely ever use the delete key, even outside Godot. Ctrl X is right there, much easier to press than delete for me personally. You can display a warning to warn you if an export field is not set. Mark the script with a tool annotation and extend the get configuration warnings method. Create a condition and return a string array with the message or messages you'd like to show. Create a setter for the variable and call update configuration warnings. You will now see a warning symbol on the node if that condition is met. Clicking on the symbol will show the messages. Here are the steps so you can pause and follow along at your own pace. Click on this button to quickly open the docs page for that node. You can also right click on any property in the inspector and open the docs for that property from the context menu. The name you see on top is how you access it through code. Use the await keyword to wait for a signal to fire before code continues executing. Here's a really brief rundown. You can await any signal, including custom signals. Awaiting inside a method turns that method into a coroutine. Awaiting the coroutine waits until the entire coroutine finishes executing before returning execution to the caller. However, calling the coroutine normally runs the method asynchronously. 
This means that the method will now run in parallel alongside the normal execution. Does that sound confusing? That's because it is. Let me know if you'd like to see a longer video on coroutines. Use pick random on an array to pick a random element from that array. You can use values.pickrandom on an enum to pick a random enum value, and you can pattern match against the result. You may have already known that you can clamp an export variable's value in the inspector using the export range attribute. When you do this with a float, Godot gives you a handy slider. But annoyingly, it doesn't when you do it for integers. You can input a third parameter with a value of 0.99 into the export range attribute, and there you go, int slider. Any nodes that aren't in the scene tree don't execute their process methods. This means that you can simply remove nodes from the scene tree to pause their process method from running. Make sure you store a reference to them so you can add them back. This could be useful to pause a bunch of timers under a single node for example. Just remove their parent node from the tree to pause them all at once. Use the distance squared to method instead of using the distance to method when using distance checks. Note that you'll also have to square the value that you're checking against. Doing this avoids a square root calculation under the hood and will provide a performance improvement while providing the same functionality. Hold control and drag a file from the file system to automatically create a preload method with the file path set. Use print tree to print the tree structure into the console. Useful when you need to inspect or debug large trees. You can use print tree pretty to get a better graphical representation. Clicking on this button in the animation tab only shows the tracks of the selected nodes. You can hold control to temporarily disable snapping. Press A to play the animation. Press D to play backwards. Press S to pause or stop. You can use the export flag physics annotations to expose an editable layer mask to the inspector. You can now pass this variable into a raycast for it to only work with the selected layers for example. With text selected, you can drag and drop the text while holding control to duplicate it at the mouse position. Use assert to make sure that a certain condition is true. If the assertion fails, the game immediately crashes and will let you know that the assertion has failed. You can optionally pass in a string parameter to print out when an assertion error occurs. Assert is only used for debugging. Assertions only run in the editor and are ignored in real builds. You can drag an image file into a sprite 2D node to set the texture directly. If a texture already exists, this replaces it. Dragging a node into a folder in the file system turns it into a standalone scene at that path. Use this syntax to call defer to avoid a string reference. In the previous video, I mentioned that you could wrap the method in callable, but someone in the comments let me know that there was no real need to do that. Thank you. Holding shift and then clicking on the arrow next to a node will fold or unfold its hierarchy recursively. The previous tip also works for the folders in the file system window. Holding control and dragging a file into a different folder in the file system duplicates it. This combos pretty nicely with the previous tip. Use this button to split the file system into two windows. You can select folders in the window on top and see their contents below. This also combos pretty well with the previous tip. Use the pick button to connect signals to pre-existing methods. For example, you could have a timer under a particle system and have it queue free it on timeout. Now code needed. You can directly replace the main scene from the file system without having to go to the project settings. You probably know that you can lock nodes using this button to disallow selection in the viewport. However, this still allows selection of the child nodes. Use the button to the right of the lock node button to lock all the children of the selected node. Alternatively, you can use these keyboard shortcuts with the node selected if you prefer. Remember BB code and rich text labels from the previous video? Well, guess what? You can also use it inside of your print statements. You need to use print rich instead of print to use BB code. You can find a link to the docs below which will guide you through how you can use BB code. And there you go, that's 50 more tips. I hope you found some value in watching this video. Let me know which tips were your favorites. Watch the previous 50 tips video if you haven't already. It'll be linked down below and on the end screen card. I also wanted to quickly bring up the fact that a lot of you commented on the last video about the pacing being too quick, which I completely understand. I tried to be a little more mindful about making things clearer while editing this video, but my goal was still to make a fast paced video, because I personally hate videos that take 3 minutes to explain something that could have taken 10 seconds to, and I would rather create something that I would want to watch myself. What do you think? Anyways, thanks for watching, see ya.